Hi there, guys. Um, well, this video is obviously called the, the butchering of the parable of the talents. <clears throat> I'm just going to go through another uh, Mandela effect, which seems to just be sweeping across all the videos you watch on YouTube. Uh, thanks to this brother who, for bringing it to my attention. Um, a little bit about that later, but uh, let's just look at what the parable of the talents now says. Um, it's also mentioned in here Matthew 25 14 30. Uh, it does say talents in Matthew, you see. It does say talents in Matthew, the parable of the talents. But the Luke 19 11 to 27 version um, is, is almost completely different. I've uh, never noticed this before. Let's just read it. It says, As they heard these things, he added and spake a parable because he was near to Jerusalem, because they thought that the kingdom of God should immediately appear. He said, Therefore a certain nobleman went into a far country to receive for himself a kingdom to return. And he called his ten servants and delivered them ten pounds. I just used to say ten talents, but uh, never remember it saying pounds, and I don't know what minus has to do with this parable at all uh, and says unto them occupy until I come but his citizens hated him and sent a message after him saying we will not have this man to reign over us and it came to pass that when he was returned having received the kingdom then he commanded these servants to be called unto him to whom he had given the money, talents, didn't say it, it's saying pounds first and then it's saying money, it just never said money before. This, this is a spiritually discerned parable, it's not about money actually. The, the whole meaning of the parable isn't about money, but they're making it about money now. That he might know how much every man had gained by trading, okay. Then came the first, saying, Lord, thy pound hath gained ten pounds. And he said unto him, Well, thou good servant, because thou hast been faithful in very little, have thou authority over ten cities. Um, the second came, saying, Lord, thy pound hath gained five pounds. And he said likewise to him, Be thou over five cities. Like the, I suppose the uh, Latter-day Saints would uh, talk about this being planets. I'm not sure what their version says, but they use the King James Bible as well. This is the King James Version. I'll just show you the King James Bible as the King James Version. Um, another came saying, Lord, behold, here is thy pound, which I have kept laid up in a napkin. Laid up in a napkin. Now, I remember it saying, it might say in Matthew, I remember it saying that the the wicked, he's called the wicked servant, okay, he buried his talent. Now it might say that in Matthew 25, um, a hard man, okay, when hid thy talent in the earth, okay, well it does say it in Matthew. Um, but it just seems quite far removed. Now this could have been like this for a little while. This might not be a Mandela effect. You know, as I'm making this video, I guess not all Mandela effects are Mandela effects, but I think this has just been totally butchered, you know. Um, and I'll give you the meaning of it in a second. I just want to compare it to Matthew's um, parable. Um... <laughs> It says here, I laid up in a napkin, for I feared thee, because thou art a austere man. Never remember that word, but I mean, okay. Thou takest up that thou laidest not down, and reapest that thou did not sow. And he said unto him, Out of thine own mouth will I judge thee, thou wicked servant. I remember that, wicked servant. Thou knowest that I was an austere man taking up that I laid not down and reaping that I did not sow wherefore then 
gave us there. I mean, this is quite a deep parable because the lo the lordship salvationists. I mean, it's it's really really quite something there, isn't it? Um. Anyhow, wherefore then gavest thou my money into a bank that at my coming I might have required mine own with usury? Now the Torah states that you're not to borrow out money, um, especially to uh, you know your own people. And you know these three men seem to be working for the for the Lord or the King here. You see, so. What they used to do is that they used to exchange um, the currency um, into the the temple uh, currency. Okay, so it was originally I think it said the exchangers. It wasn't a bank. It was take take it to the exchangers and they shall exchange it. But usury isn't allowed really in the Torah at all. Um, and he said unto them that stood by, Take from him the pound, and give it to him that has ten pounds. And they said unto him, Lord, he has ten pounds. For I say unto you, that unto every one which has been given, and from him that has not, even that he hath, shall be taken away from him. I remember that. But this part I don't really remember. And then it says, but those mine enemies which would not that I should reign over them, bring hither and slay them before me. I'm not really sure how this is part of this parable. Um, if it said, bring thine wicked servant, uh, you know, which, which that I should not reign over them, and bring them hither and slay them, them before me, but, uh, you know, it doesn't make complete sense. Um, it doesn't really tie into the the rest of the parable here. I wonder what it says in Matthew. Um, and for every one to be given, and he shall be given have I shall have an abundance. But from him not shall be taken away, even with that which he has. And cast ye the unprofitable servant into outer darkness. This is what I remember it saying. Cast ye your profitable servant into outer darkness. They shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. I wasn't really sure if it was part of the, you know, the ten, the ten virgins as well talks about that because they're um, not wearing the right clothes. They're not wearing the bridal clothes, so they're cast into outer darkness. And remember, and also says it here as well. So I think that the parable of the ten miners. I just do not see what it's got to do with this spiritually discerned parable in Matthew because it's it's about a lot more than than just money this parable um, uh, it's about more than just money exchangers it says here you see so I remember it saying exchangers and not bank you see it's very, um, it then also says usury as well. Well, that's interesting. Um, okay. Well, the next part of this I want to go into is Adolf Hitler, which I think definitely is a Mandela effect because I remember old pictures of Adolf Hitler which were in colour. Um, this is quite a quite a well-known one that is retreat retreat in Austria I think it is and you can see he's got brown eyes here very clearly um, you can see it's almost like a natural colors that uh, we've got here and you can see clearly he's got brown eyes but recently like all the videos that are in YouTube now um, let's try and get an example even this one here now they've they've coloured his eyes to to having blue eyes because I always remember him having brown eyes, um, you know, and talking about the master race and all that stuff. But he himself was was dark hair with brown eyes. You see, so this is the deception to me. This is how I thought. Obviously, the guy's just uh, 
possessed by by Lucifer, you know. Um, sort of like he's very very deceptive sort of theologies that that he's got, you know. Very racist actually, and not just uh, skin color, but also it, it didn't make sense because he himself had dark hair and brown eyes, and yet now we got pictures of him having blue eyes, um, which doesn't. I mean, some of these old black and white pictures, you can almost tell that he's got brown eyes, you know? Most of them, you, you, you would guess that he's got brown eyes, brown eyes there. Um, but now, see, we're getting pictures like this, and they're just shading his eyes in blue, which doesn't look natural to me. And I always remember him being a sort of hypocrite because you know he taught about the master race having blue eyes but he himself didn't have blue eyes so I you know I've d I discussed this with people in the past and they agreed that's right you know Hitler's got brown eyes and now there's pictures of him here having blue eyes for some reason so uh, I mean is it possible that you can die you, you can get I die I suppose I suppose you can um, I suppose you can but you know these people tend to die the white part of their eyes but <clears throat> um, I think there's a way of actually dying the, the, the iris here as well and I think some people do that nowadays and you can get contact lenses like this as well but that doesn't mean to say that the people aren't demon possessed I've seen people's eyes change to like to like looking like this because they're demon possessed anyhow just thought I'd mention that thanks for watching may the Lord bless you